Well, <coughs> pardon me. This is a pen I bought on eBay. It arrived a couple of days ago. A lovely Waterman pen from the 20s. Um, it's, in for those people in the know, it's a Waterman 0552, which meant gold-filled overlay lever filling pen with a number two nib. And I, in my collection, I had already the 452, which is a sterling overlay pen of the same pattern. And I thought, well, why don't I take them out for a ride? So one of them I filled with brown ink and the other I filled with blue ink. And my cunning plan was to draw uh, a drawing with both of them. Not at the same time like I'm implying here, or like this, because I'm not ambidextrous, but I looked at the scene in front of me, uh, which was various things in the Boston Public Library, and I started at the top, uh, floor looking up at a corner of the murals um, painted by John Singer Sargent. And in between, here's a mural, here's another one, and then in between the murals were all of these gold leafed uh, truly cue bric a brac um, molding of various sorts and lamps and other molding and brackets and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I sort of divided my eyeball into two parts. One part saw um, warm colored things, the other part saw cool, cool colored things, and that's sort of how I chose what pen to use and what ink to use. Then I took my water brush, which is here, and because the, the inks that I'm using are water soluble, by running over a uh, already placed line, the line would dissolve. And the blue line um, ink was better than the brown ink. I had been using walnut ink in the gold pen, and uh, that is made of real walnuts. And um, it didn't bleed as much. I couldn't find my regular brown wa wa waterman ink or whatever. I've now found a little bit of brown waterman ink, which I watered down, so now this has sort of brown ink in it. But here's another one, again, looking almost straight up. I, rather than seeing the entire thing, I see almost a, think of a Mondrian painting. You know, what does a Mondrian painting look like in your, in your mind's eye? It probably looks like something like this. You know, just a bunch of squares and they're slightly different colors. Well, I can, I often will look at a building that w same way. Usually, I, for it to work well, I have to sort of look straight on. So I have horizontal and vertical lines rather than a skew where half the lines are diagonal. But if I look at something straight on, where I have a vertical and horizontal lines, I'm, I sort of fall into making Mondrian-like paintings. So if Mondrian was active in the Baroque period, this is what his paintings would look like. But he wasn't, so I have to do it for him. So again, uh, the cool color was sort of a, in reality, it was a greenish paint, very light, pale, pea soupy green, and then the gold, and then there was 
um, sort of tan interior of these things. And then the mosaic, I mean, uh, the mural was down here somewhere and sort of around that. Um, looking sideways rather than straight up, uh, these beautiful wall sconces, the mural behind, mural above, gold, bric-a-brac. It had some Hebrew writing. The, the, the murals on the top floor of the library are uh, Sargent's History of Religion, Religions. Uh, so there's Egyptian things, there's um, gods of the Old Testament, and there's also Jesus somewhere there. In fact, I think here, this is upside down Jesus being nailed to the cross and there's his foot over there. And it's a very weird foreshortened view, which is made even more foreshortened by the fact that we're looking up at it. So it's, uh, it's a masterpiece of sort of trompe l'oeil uh, painting that he did for this. Um, is it worth getting an airplane ticket to come to Boston just to see that? Yeah, sure, why not? You also get to go across the street and see um, Trinity Church, and you can see Old South Church. Even if you don't go anywhere other than that one block in Boston, it's worth the price of a ticket. And you can take a flight <laughs> on the same airplane going back home, wherever you live. Um, so again, the, the blues were in this case the blues kind of became the ones that were darkest and the beige became the warmer cooler uh, the warmer softer uh, tones uh, maybe i forget how i i think i changed my rules here huh. then i came home and there was all sorts of lightning and thunder going on outside my apartment and I thought well I'll use the same thing so I looked at the horizon line and the things above the horizon line were blue and that included the um, Hancock Tower and some other buildings that are being built and a crane building another building and then below the horizon line were the, the buildings that were closer to me, and they also were in red brick and stuff. So I, I, I used the same two pens uh, to represent the thunderstorm that was making all sorts of racket, but nothing actually came of it. Maybe on Cape Cod it stormed, but it wasn't doing it here, just making noise. And... So I, I did a couple of drawings where I panned that way. I think that was the last one. I did three drawings. So I moved my eye, <coughs> sorry, to follow the storm as it was exiting stage right or left. I don't know what stage this is. It's different. It's opposite of what you think. Exit, stage right, stage left even. Snaggle posts remember him. So the clouds are going that way. So if I wasn't uh, on stage in my cloud costume, I would exit stage right, which is going from the audience from the left, I think. Anyway, so this is the middle one, and then this is the final one. And... Um, Was it successful? I don't know. I mean, you tell me. So the paper I used was sort of a hard, hard surface paper. I don't know what kind of paper it is. They, I used to go to a, a paper store that had the, what I called the magic trunk. How do you spell magic? Magic trunk. And it was a big steamer trunk in the middle of the store and it was fill a bag for five dollars and I would fill that shopping bag there was not 
By the time I com compressed everything into this shopping bag, it was almost like it was a block of wood because I would fill it so much with these five and a half by eight and a half pieces of paper. And the, you know, the, the normal customer would come in with their idea to get some scrap paper for their scrapbooking. And they might need 10 sheets of this and eight sheets of black. And they, they didn't, they weren't on a mission. When I'm on a mission, I'm on a mission. But the clerk over here behind the counter was smiling because these are all sort of end cuts of things that, you know, they don't have enough to put in a ream or however they normally sell this stuff. So anytime anyone comes in to to buy any number of bags of, of paper, uh, they would smile. Why is this? I just put a big blob of ink in my coffee. I, I, in in it's sitting here with the nib exposed. It had dried, and I needed to dip it into water. And I thought I was dipping it into water, and I dipped it in, almost dipped it into my coffee, but a blob of ink went into my coffee. So anyway. So let's pretend this is my drawing of the John Singer Sergeant mural. This is part of the history of religion that he didn't paint, which is the greedy televangelists in their trunk of money that they get from their stupid parishioners that cash their social security check and give it to them along with their printed and typewritten prayers that they throw in the dumpster. Those are, the prayers are here, the checks are here, and the, I can just change the clerk at the store to the televangelist laughing all the way to the bank. See? See how my mind works? And uh, why is this not, okay, it is. It is dissolving a little bit. The, this is already watered down, the, the brown ink, so it doesn't dissolve. But what this do allows me to do, this method of drawing, where I have two pens and an ink, a water brush, is the, the drawing with line and with cross-hatching sort of is how I used to draw all the time. So I understand how that works. I don't understand how color works. My colors always get too muddy when I actually try watercolor. Um, so by drawing with something I understand with one color, which essentially is just making value, here's a light cool tone, here's a dark cool tone, here's a light warm tone, here's a dark warm tone. The number of gears in my brain can be reduced to four or five or six maybe while I'm drawing rather than looking at a watercolor tray that has all these different colors that then you mix to make all these other different colors and I don't know how to do that with actual watercolor. I, um, I can do it on the iPad I think I'd, I, I, I understand, I just copy what I see, but I see the colors correctly. Uh, I don't have time or the ability to, to take a little bit of this color and a little bit of that color and make it into the color I want. I don't know how to do that. And then I'm impatient so that that color that I just mix that might be perfect, I put on the painting and it bleeds and it turns into mud. But again, two colors, two value, values, ranges in each of those colors will allow me to come up with a sort of a duotone uh, way of rendering. And I can render, I can use this system to represent two different kinds of things. It could be you know, 
regardless of the of the of the actual colors of the model or the whatever I'm drawing, I could be drawing a you know a naked person with with you know their feet and their legs and their whatever bits and pieces they're showing, and then with the blue ink. I can draw the, um, it could be hair, it could be a toga, it could be the background. And I think for me to have a logical reason for using one color over another makes sense. Whereas uh, I could also, you know, draw the figure, let's say this is a, nude model posing for me and it's just the nude model you know maybe the shadows could be blue and the body could be brown or the or i could draw i could draw both at the same time you know and come up with some sort of interesting way of depicting it's like when people use those pencils that have all the different color leads in it. Uh, the two, the, you sort of can squint and see the drawing in one color only, but you look at you actually open up your eyeballs and you let both of your rods and cones. I don't know which one does which. Here's your eyeball. Here's a cone and here's a rod. One of them sees color. One of them sees value, and you know, you can look at any drawing, this drawing, with just the value eyeball, brain cell, uh, eyeball, tissue, whatever, whatever the cones are, the cones and rods are. You can see it with just, just this thing as value pretty easily. But you can also see it as color. And I'm still trying to struggle with that in my drawing. Uh, or, I don't want to say struggle, that sounds too mind comfy. It is not a struggle. It's a joy. What would, what, if, if Durfuhrer had, was having fun in Langsdorf prison and doing whatever he was doing, what would that mein, mein Freulich, you know? But it's not a struggle. It's sort of fun. It's a play. It's play. Okay. I, you know, I used to play cops and robbers and cowboys and Indians. And I won't tell you the other roles I played. But I was going somewhere with this. <laughs> But playing with things, playing with, with something and learning something and having fun with something, um, even if you're failing uh, at it, um, why not do it, you know? You've got how many more minutes on this planet before return to dust or if, the, if we believe that people we get signed over our televent or our social security check to our place in heaven where did my history of religion go it would be interesting to see what what sergeant would have done with that you know if there was another hall we could drag him kicking and screaming out of the grave john you know we love these murals you did they're really really nice but Things have changed a little bit because of religion. We've got people crashing airplanes into buildings. We have other people stealing money from old people. We have people believing in flying saucers. We have people drinking poisoned Kool-Aid. Let's, let's show some of that. Goodbye, everyone. It was nice, <laughs> nice talking to you.